Would you like to learn how to make low moisture mozzarella from pasteurized milk at home? Well today on WTF, we're going to show you how to make the easiest and most affordable mozzarella you can at home. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. Here on WTF, every week we talk about unique ingredients and techniques and show you how to do these recipes in your kitchen. So subscribe and ring the bell and you'll get notified of our episodes when they come out. This week, we are going to be showing you how to make a low moisture mozzarella from pasteurized homogenized milk. And that's really awesome because typically people think you can only make mozzarella out of raw milk. And Scott, can you talk a little bit about why that is? Why is it that we can't just use a, uh, you know, like a store-bought milk for your everyday mozzarella needs? Yeah, so generally the store-bought milk that you're going to get is an ultra-pasteurized ultra milk. And that ultra-pasteurized milk goes through a really intense heating process, which destroys a lot of the proteins and kind of disconnects a lot of the calcium from them. And with that disconnection, you lose the ability to make a stringy cheese. Mm -hmm. You can make a ricotta, but you can't make a stringy cheese. Even if you use the correct method and use all, you know, rennet and everything, you would not be able to get that stringy cheese. But if you're using just a regular pasteurized, homogenized milk, there is a way that you can make a mozzarella but it is more like a low moisture mozzarella. So it's good for shredding and, and putting on you know, grilled cheeses and things like that. Yeah, and for folks who uh, have experience making the fresh mozzarella from raw milk, can you talk a little bit about how the process is different and you know, what steps yeah. do you have to take that might be, obviously we're gonna walk through it today on the demo, of course, but what, uh, you know, what are they expecting <coughs> that's different? It's almost completely different. Mm -hmm. So usually you'd have raw milk, to make like a, a nice pulled mozzarella, like a really milky mozzarella. The raw milk would get rennet and you would slice it up and then you'd take those curds and you'd pull those curds into like a, a stretchy mozzarella. Mm -hmm. With this, obviously we're using pasteurized homogenized milk. We're going to have to add uh, calcium chloride that adds a little bit of calcium back to it. So it creates those bonds back between the proteins so that when you make it, you will be able to get a stretchiness out of it. Now it's going to look at a few points during this process, mm -hmm. like, oh no, this is wrong. I can't uh -huh. use this. But if you watch it and uh, kind of listen to the little things, uh, it's easier than just making it on your own and having to throw it away a few times. Because it did take a few times to really understand what this is supposed to look like. It will look like ricotta until you fold it, which is another step. You fold this rather than pull it, uh, and you're going to get that stretchy mozzarella texture. But it's really going to be very different than if you've ever made mozzarella out of raw milk. Yeah, and for our regular viewers who are familiar with you know, the term calcium chloride as well as our other calcium salts, why is it that we're using calcium chloride instead of let's say calcium lactate, calcium lactate gluconate, which are tasteless and you would think uh, may be preferable for this type of application? So you wanna use as little of the calcium as possible, but with the highest amount of calcium. So when you add in the calcium chloride, it's a very small amount. It's Per one gallon, it's a teaspoon. Okay. So you're not never going to get any of that bitterness mm -hmm. from it because there's uh, enough flavor and salt and everything that goes into the mozzarella. Then you're never going to taste any of that, but you are getting the most calcium, like bang for your buck. Okay. So by adding that, you're going to be able to just add the calcium back without having to add too much to it. Yeah. And because I know this is a fairly involved process, I think we want to jump into the demo as early as yes. possible. Uh, just before we begin, remember at some point in this episode, we will be talking about this week's giveaway so you can make ultra low, well not ultra, but low moisturized, <laughs> low moisture mozzarella at home. All right, now that I've screwed that up, let's talk about the demo. <laughs> Great, so the first thing we're gonna add is generally you add it right at the beginning is uh, citric acid. So you wanna acidulate the milk just a little bit. Okay. So a little bit of citric acid, and this is gonna help start creating those um, curds. And how much milk do we have in this pot right One now? One gallon. Okay. So the base, Baseline recipe you're going to use is about one gallon for any home cook. Obviously, if you're working at a dairy farm, it's many, many more gallons of milk. But as you can see, the calcium, I'm sorry, the uh, citric acid that I added to this already starts creating little curds on here. But that's good. Mm -hmm. That is totally fine. You'll see them start to float around. You don't have to worry about that. It's doing exactly what it needs to. Mm -hmm. The next thing you do need to do is you need to add calcium chloride. Put this in a little bit of water 
just to dilute it so it mixes in easier. Mm -hmm. And this is the calcium chloride, like I said, that's going to help create those bonds. Okay. I'm gonna pour this. Okay. Are we heating this to a boil? How much are we heating this right Great now? Great question. So right now it's at 88 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. So if you have a thermometer, an instant read thermometer, just heat it up to about 85 degrees. The, the heat, the residual heat from the pan will bring it up a little bit more, but you don't want to get it to 80, 88 and then start adding things because the curds will start to set and pull away at any higher temp. So okay. just heat, it, heat the, the milk up to about 85 if you don't have something like a control freak, which we have, um, and then allow the residual heat from the pan to finish heating it as you add these two ingredients. Okay. So now that those are added in, we're pretty much ready to go. The next thing we need is our rennet. So the same thing, I took about a quarter of a tablet, which mm -hmm. you can see the, the tablets are right there. Um, so about a quarter of a tablet, you can go a little bit less. You don't want to add too much because it will um, overset it and you won't be able to get that pull. So about a quarter of a tablet to a gallon is going to be perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to do that. And I just mix it in with a little bit of water here yeah. just to break it up and dilute it so I'm not trying to do it in the bottom of a pan full of milk. And I can see what you mean by at points it's going to look wrong because it definitely <laughs> looks like you're making ricotta right now. Yes, it, it, it will look wrong for quite a bit of this. So at mm -hmm. this point, I'm going to mix it up until I see a, like a more of a separation. Mm -hmm. And the, by the separation, I mean it'll go white parts and it'll go slightly clear parts. And when I see that, I know I'm good. So I'm going to bring this up. The next temperature we take it to is 104 degrees. So at that 104 degrees, once I see that separation, I'm just going to stir it. And when I see it, it's going to um, sit here for as long as I can let it sit here. If you can go for an hour, that's perfectly fine. You want the curd to reach 104 degrees. Okay. The liquid around it will heat reach 104, but I want the curd to reach 104. Okay. That's a really important step because some people put the thermometer down inside the water. Oh, it's above 104. They pull it and the curd's still at 88. Okay. Because uh, the curd is much harder to heat up. Mm -hmm. So you heat it very gently until it reaches. All but right. Janie, you see that, that bigger separation, right? It's, yes, it's yep, little it's starting bits. to happen. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do now is pretty much not touch it. I'm gonna let this gently heat up to 104 degrees, the curd that is, and you'll see it separate and start purging out its liquid. The more liquid it purges out, the, the easier it's going to be to deal with. Okay, so let's let this sit here and we'll go through a few more steps of uh, folding it when it gets to the right temperature and uh, we can talk about that when we get there. But at this point, we kind of just have to let it go. Okay. okay. So as you can see here, the curd is pulling away from the side of the pan and I don't really like to disturb it at this point. I just want to make sure the curd reaches 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the curd has reached 104 degrees Fahrenheit, you can strain it. Just make sure that you get as much of the clear way out so it makes the second step much easier. The last step is to heat the curd in the microwave for 30 second increments at about 50% power. You just want to heat it gently until it reaches about 160 to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. At this point, the curd will start to stretch and you can form it into either little mozzarella balls or we like to place it into a silicone mold so that we can shred it or slice it. All right, so now that we've made our mozzarella, you can pretty much make whatever you want with it. Okay, and so what's kind of cool about this is that, you know, you made it, can we eat it right now? Do we need to refrigerate it? So if you wanted to eat it, there's two ways you can do it. You can place it into a mold like this, let it cool, and then you can shred it, slice it, put it on whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Use it as a normal, you know, mozzarella. Or if you wanted to have it like uh, cold, it'll have a, a slightly chewier texture than a fresh mozzarella, but you could absolutely take it. And as you're pulling it, or, you know, as you saw with uh, the spoon, is basically you stretch it with a spoon. Mm -hmm. You can then, uh, pinch it off into like little um, like mozzarella balls and put that right into a brine for about 10 minutes and then those are ready to go. I just would not let them sit in the brine okay. for a long period of time because they'll start to deteriorate just because that's how it is compared to the low mo or the, the regular raw mozzarella. Yeah, and that brings me to my next point. So, you know, we kind of reference low moisture mozzarella a whole bunch of times. What is kind of the textural um, and usage difference between 
a fresh raw milk mozzarella and a low moisture mozzarella because it's still fresh, but it's not yeah. the same. Yeah, so it'll be a little chewier. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just gonna just going to happen when you remove the moisture from it. But you could still use it as like a, you know like little mozzarella balls on a salad or like a kebab, caprese, whatever it happens to be. Mm -hmm. And if you shred it, it's going to it's melt just normally as a mozzarella would. Awesome. So what recipes did we prepare today? So we put together a nice pizza. I mean, pizza is going to be like the number one mozzarella food. So mm -hmm. why not put that on there? So we put mozzarella on the bottom. This is kind of our Sicilian style sauce in the middle. More mozzarella on top. And this is the mozzarella we made. Mm -hmm. uh, and then some pepperoni. And uh, yeah, a, a recipe great. that's coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and Yuda is on there as well. So oh, nice. uh, that stick around, you'll be able to see that in a few weeks. And then we made a grilled cheese because why not have like the stringiest, meltiest grilled cheese there is? All right, since I am lactose intolerant, I will not be <laughs> taste testing the grilled cheese. I get so to eat for you're once. gonna have to be your own taste tester. You never today. get to eat. You can, you can rip that sandwich apart. So while Scott is doing the eating, I'm gonna be talking about this week's giveaway, which is going to be uh, what you see here on the table today the calcium chloride the citric acid, as well as the microbial rennet, which you can win in order to make your own low moisture mozzarella at home. And that's really awesome because it's a great way, you know, like not everybody has access to raw milk, but everyone has access to the grocery store. And Scott's learning, ah, it's hard to be the taste tester because once you take that bet, you can't keep talking. I took a me size bite, <laughs> not a TV size bite. So um, we're gonna get back into the test. Oh, I totally forgot to say, what they need to do to enter to win, duh. Okay, in order to enter to win today's prize, um, give us a challenge. Tell us a recipe, a classic recipe that you would like to see us modernize here in the test kitchen. So leave that in the comments below in order to enter to win. So until next week, from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Guerin.